assignments to see some of that? Mm -hmm. um, so, on most, you know, at its most basic, the difference between assignments and quizzes is uh, formative versus summative assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, so your assignments are meant to be given to your students as classwork or homework. They'll be given kind of feedback and targeted mini lessons uh, in real time, so right when they make their mistakes. Um, quizzes, on the other hand, are end of a unit, I need a grade for grade book, and I want to compare my students' work and attempts uh, on their first try. Mm -hmm. So quizzes are you know, meant to be your summative grades. They will show the results of students' uh, you know, answers mm -hmm. on each question, whereas assignments of students are given multiple attempts to get questions correct. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say we decide we want to create an apostrophes assignment. Um, let me call it cool apostrophes. Um, you always can choose the number of questions. You can scramble if you want to make sure that no students are seeing the same question at the same time. Um, you can copy it to multiple class periods if you like to. Uh, you'll also notice that as opposed to pretest, where you're just asked to select the category, um, in assignments, you can actually choose specific subcategories you'd like to focus on. Mm. So we could obviously always select all of them, but for this example, let's say we're just going to focus you know, on general contractions, tricky contractions, and a master group. And these are just kind of built-in checkpoints. Um, so the categories are in bold there, and then the subcategories are not bolded? Right. So the, the, bold, the mastery groups are, and this is something we're going to address later on just to show what they look like on the student's view. Mm -hmm. um, the mastery groups are checkpoints that are built in along the way. So um, this will assess students' understanding of basic contractions. This will assess students' understanding of more complex contractions. Mm -hmm. um, and the mastery group will compare those two, you know, kind of in harmony. So it'll give students a general contractions question compared to the tricky contractions to make sure that they don't just understand those skills in isolation. Mm. Um, and so these will appear on the student practice pages as kind of built-in checkpoints that students will be able to access on their own as well. So um, what would you, that whole list there, then, for example, that's all apostrophes, right? That entire list? Correct. Yeah. Everything here is, is apostrophes. If you're ever wondering what we mean when we title some of these categories, mm -hmm. um, You'll see some of them have acronyms that I'm pretty sure we just made up. Yeah. Um, you can just hover over the I, and it'll show, give you a little mini lesson of what we mean or what, what it's going to be assessing. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what would you recommend? Let's say I've got a group that needs to work on apostrophes, or a, maybe it's our our lesson for the week or two. Would right. you click all of them, or would you go for the bolded, or? Yeah. So, what you uh, going back to your earlier question about? Um, you know, kind of creating diagnostic assessments, then comparing diagnostics to, you know, pre-test, post-test. Um, if you know you want to focus on apostrophes with the class or with a small group of students, um, what you can do is create some sort of diagnostic specifically uh, within apostrophes, make it 20 or 30 questions, give it to your kids. Um, you'll get that data uh, in your progress page here, mm -hmm. and you'll then be able to see... Uh, where kids are struggling, um, they'll also be able to see that data on their practice pages, which we will look at shortly. Um, and then you'll be able to either decide if you want to create multiple smaller assignments targeting small groups based mm -hmm. on mistakes that kids have made, um, or your students, because they will be able to see their performance on their practice pages, can also guide their own learning. Mm -hmm. um, so what lots of teachers have, have embraced with, with this kind of gamified student view that we're going to return to this in a little bit, but this is just so you can see now. Um, if I, as a teacher, create one assignment that assesses all of these apostrophe subcategories, mm -hmm. each student will see a different uh, practice page based on how they performed. Mm -hmm. So if you, as a teacher, want to say, OK, we're going to do 30 questions. These kids will take it, see how they do. And then afterwards, um, each kid will know what he or she has to work on because these bars will be a little bit differently for each. Yeah. Um, that's definitely one way of, of approaching it. Um, mm -hmm. And in order to access more practice, all kids have to do is click and click practice. Mm -hmm. But this, um, this isn't the assignment. This is a practice, right? Yep. So this is just where kids can access yeah. their own work at any time. Okay. Um, if you decide as a teacher that, you know, uh, let's dump the new apostrophes here. This is the progress heat map that shows your 
overall progress, and we'll return to this shortly as well. Um, you decide that plural nouns is this pervasive area of difficulty for your class after creating that diagnostic. Um, you can decide to, you know, kind of make this assignment just targeting plural nouns. Um, or you could also, um, you know, you know that if you create this assignment, when your students get answers wrong, they'll be shown many lessons in real time. Um, you can also direct students to the rules page with, where they'll be able to see many lessons at any time. Um, but so the data from both the pretest and these assignments mm -hmm. will feed to your progress heat map and will enable you as a teacher to see where these pervasive misunderstandings occur. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to create an assignment for a small group, um, so let's, let's decide we don't want to create it for the whole class and we don't want to assess all of these topics, we just want to assess a few. We'll do general contractions. Instead of clicking multiple classes, what you'll do is just click select specific students. You'll just check off the ones that you want to focus on general contractions. And when you create this assignment, uh, these four kids will see a completely unique set of questions, um, specifically having to do with contractions. And then they'll also, obviously, every question will be customized um, so that each student will see only subjects that they're interested in. Um, and so this assignment page gives you a lot of agency to, to kind of create new work for your students and make sure that if their work is, A, engaging for them, and B, kind of new and unique to them so they're not just getting repeats of the same questions over and over again. What have you seen from teachers in terms of balancing assignment work and general practice work? Yeah, uh, so... Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but your students have have one to one. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, and so, how do you imagine them, um, or how do you envision this uh, working in the classroom? Um, you know, how frequently would students access Notre Dame? In, in what capacity would they would they access it? Well, I'm just thinking back because we also use the Membean mm -hmm. vocabulary program I was talking yep. about, and so uh, many teachers kind of think of a, a two week cycle of maybe two or three sessions per week, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the two week cycle. Uh, summative assessment so that's what I'm yeah. envisioning uh, on a similar yeah. cycle for and and it could be that um, maybe teachers work with uh, you know they could set up two or three different groups based on the results of and maybe do an assignment and then uh, do some practice time as well and then uh, either revisit an assignment or then move right to the summative quiz I don't know is that yeah, for sure. Um, so, so there are basically two prevalent use cases we've seen. Uh, one is that uh, both involve obviously creating diagnostics first because mm -hmm. that data is incredibly helpful. So, it takes the guesswork out of your your instruction. Mm -hmm. um, and so, once you have that data, depending on what kind of teacher you are, uh, some teachers prefer to control, um, you know, create assignments regularly, give them to their students, see the results, and then create more assignments. Um, so, if I were to do that, I would look at apostrophes data. Um, let's say it's first it's, it looks like Christian, Joanne, Sydney, and Claude really need to work on it's first it's. Um, so I just, you know, doing what we just did, mm -hmm. uh, create work for Sydney and Claude, uh, or for those three students just targeting it's first it's. Um, use those results, see how their performance on their, you know, that specific assignment was, and determine if students we think they understand it or not. Mm -hmm. um, if not, you can create more, more work, of course, or circle up with them in a small group. Um, other teachers have said, OK, I have enough stuff to create on my own. Um, I'm going to create a diagnostic and then kind of be more of a facilitator and let my kids use this practice page. Um, I'm going to tell them and probably remind them every day, because kids forget everything, um, that we have a quiz in two weeks that's going to focus on apostrophes. Um, by the time, you know, two Fridays from now arrives, every student should have their mastery in every apostrophes category above 80. Um, they know that during no reading time, they already have their diagnostic data, so they know which categories they need to focus on. Um, and then you as a teacher could see if there are kids that are routinely struggling with categories and kind of monitor their progress on this page because performance for the practice page also feeds to this progress heat map. Mm -hmm. um, so which of those do you think makes more sense based on uh, the way you guys do things? Um, I could see 
both, really, yeah. depending on the class, depending on the teacher. Um, you know, I, I like the flexibility, but at the same time, the personalization of it all, so that teachers can really be focused with um, targeting assignments and or practice towards student needs, both collectively and individually, and then use that no reading 